All right, it's been about a week since I was gathering those logs back behind the shop here, and the uh, backhoe quick connector broke once again. More on that story later. Um, there's be a follow-up to that. But today I want to get back on uh, taking that, ta moving these logs back, back behind me there. But before I do that, I've decided I need to go ahead and take down these trees right here. I think I may have mentioned that in the last segment. But I want them out of the way so I can stack the logs where I want. I may leave a little bit of a stump so that they provide a kind of a front stop to keep the logs from rolling forward as I build up my uh, backstop there for the uh, uh, pistol shooting range. And so first thing to do is to get these small little trees out of the way and that uh, that uh, T-post there, you know, bring the tractor around, pull those up, cut these down, and then take this pine here and drop it right down the trail behind the bamboo, right along there. Fortunately, that's exactly the way it's leaning, the way it wants to go, so I'm gonna send it the way it wants to go. But first, we'll get this little stuff out of the way. I'll just probably drop uh, this tree right here, that away, push it onto the pile, it can become part of the backstop. It looks like it wants to, to lean toward me. Uh, that's where the limbs are, but I'll probably use the backhoe, uh, set it up high on the tree, and encourage it, give it a little uh, guarantee that it's gonna go the way that it needs to go. So let's get on with it. Step one is to get that T-post out. Once again, having chain boxes on my tractor has been very handy. Next, I'll get that sapling and bamboo out of the way. Now for the small hardwood. I use the backhoe to help ensure the tree goes the way I want. You can hear the wind in the camera mic. It's not strong, but it could complicate things. I make my hinge cut. Then start the back cut. A little more pressure from the backhoe should help. That ought to do it. Just one more push from the backhoe and... Um, yeah, I meant to do that. One thing about cutting down trees is you have to expect the unexpected. What I think happened was that I cut the back cut a little too far before the final push with the backhoe. I underestimated the weight of the tree above the backhoe bucket, so the hinge cut broke before I had the tree pushed far enough to go the way I wanted. 
Instead, it ended up falling the way it wanted to all along, into the bamboo patch. Oh well, this pine should be a piece of cake. It already has a slight lean in the direction I want it to go. I've moved Big Orange out of range just in case. I start the hinge cut. Now the back cut. I check to make sure I'm on course and that the back cut is about an inch and a half above the base of the hinge cut. Let's use a wedge or two to encourage it. Well, it didn't take much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, doo doo. Not only did it barber chair, but it got caught up in the limbs of other trees. I have a very dangerous situation on my hands now. Here's the tree cam view. I decide to cut a little more to see if it will go on over, but I am doubtful. And I'm as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Nope. Nothing. The breeze is picking up and it occurs to me that it just might help bring this thing down. Let's try something else dangerous, like cutting in the middle of the springboard. Okay, that's not doing much either. I'd better quit while I still have a head. The tree is still creaking and the breeze keeps picking up, so I'm going to let the wind and Mr. Gravity do the rest. I don't have to wait long. There we go! <laughs> okay. Here's another angle. And in slow motion. There we go. And here's the tree cam view.
hand in slow motion. All's well that ends well. The tree is down, I did not die, and I got some great video. I've had the best luck of, with trees today. That's by far the most dangerous situation I've had to deal with. I was more than happy to let the uh, breeze take the tree the rest of the way down. Fortunately, I had a breeze blowing out of the south in the direction I wanted the tree to go. So, and as it would surge, it was loosening it up at the top where it caught, caught into the limbs of that tree. But basically ended up with a double barber chair where it barber chaired there and then once again as I was trying to cut it a little ways up because I was afraid I had, would have too much tension there trying to cut through that and that I was going to want to snap off that way and the trunk would probably behave unpredictably. Whether I was right or not I felt I had a better chance cutting it a little further up uh, there but then it barber chaired again so after a bit I decided it was just best. It was clearly it was creaking and gonna go so I just waited it out. My wife was watching and I've noticed that all my tree catastrophes seem to happen when she's watching. When she's not watching usually everything goes perfect so so, so naturally things go dangerously when so she's I watching. I said I will cut that section right there where I can get it up into the forks and I'll just throw these back on the pile there uh, and then I'll cut leave that for another day to cut up because she's got to leave and she doesn't want me using the saw when she's gone. She's being ever protective. So that's what we'll do next. Cut this piece back up here, put the forks on, then I can start to move in logs again. Try as I might, getting both log sections at the same time isn't going to work, so I'll toss this one first. Stay tuned for more of the story where I continue moving those logs. 